Hi, it's time for some more bare metal computing and today we're going to do some input. But unlike last time we won't be using general purpose I.O. ports but instead talk to the CPU directly through the bus. One of the main reasons why I chose the EZ80 for this project is that it allows the bus to be accessed from the outside. So what exactly is the bus? The bus is a bunch of signals that the CPU uses to talk to all the memory and I.O. devices and it is shared among the entire system. Let me show you some of the important signals on the bus. First we have these 8 data lines, since this is an 8-bit computer. These are used to exchange data one byte at a time. These red and black ones are just power and not part of the bus actually. But this green one is. It's called I.O. request and is used by the CPU whenever it wants to use an I.O. device. Next to it would be memory request, which is used by the CPU when it wants to access memory, but we are not using that today. This orange one is pulled low by the CPU when it wants to read from a device on the bus, and this blue one is pulled low when it wants to write to the device on the bus. Of course, there are also address lines on the bus, which are used by the CPU to indicate which I.O. or memory address it wants to access. For today's simple experiment we won't be using them though, but rely on the fact that for any address that belongs to an on-chip device, the EZ80 won't actually assert the I.O. request pin on the external bus interface. The other signals that I won't use today are instruction read, which tells when the CPU wants to read an instruction, the wait signal, which can be used by devices on the bus to tell the CPU to wait, that's useful for slow devices, and there's also of course the reset pin that resets the CPU, and bus request and bus acknowledge, which can be used by external devices to become the master of the bus. The device that I have connected to the bus is this 74HC595 shift register. It allows data to be shifted in serially and outputs it in 8-bit parallel, which is perfect for our 8-bit bus. I'm using a simple switch and a button to put 1s and zeros into the shift register. I'm using some logic gates to create the signals required by the shift register from the control lines on the bus. Let me show you the circuit diagram and explain why these are necessary. Let's start with our 74HC595 shift register here. Data can be put into the shift register using the serial input and the shift register clock pin. These lines are controlled by two buttons, well one of them is actually a switch, and these are connected to ground. And there are also, of course, two pull-up resistors that go to 3.3 volts. The problem with switches and buttons, however, is that they are bouncy. That means, instead of a clean transition between high and low, they go back and forth several times. The solution to that problem is just adding some capacitors. But not so fast, or should I say, not so slowly. The capacitors will get rid of the bouncing, but they will also make the signal go very slowly from low to high. And CMOS devices like the 74HC595 don't like that on an input. In fact, the datasheet specifies a thousand nanoseconds maximum rise time. That's why I'm adding Schmidt triggers to make the signal square again. The one that I have available is also an inverting kind, which is not so bad since we have connected the switches to ground, so this will correct for that, and we will need inverters later anyway. The chip is called 74HC14 and actually contains six of these inverting Schmidt triggers in one package. Now that we can get data into the shift register, let's have a look at the parallel outputs. These are called QA, QB and so on all the way through QH. On the other side we have the EZ80 and the 8 data lines on its bus. The parallel output from the shift register is connected directly to the data bus. Now let's have a look at the control inputs of the shift register. The most important one is output enable. When this signal is pulled low, the outputs of the shift register are enabled. If it's high, 
the outputs go into a high impedance state, which looks like if they were not there at all. This is important so that the device will let go of the bus when it is not being accessed by the CPU. The corresponding signals on the CPU bus are I.O. request and read. Only if both of these are low, then we want the output of the shift register to be enabled. The simplest way to do that would be an OR gate. But I don't have OR gates here in the lab, I only have NAND gates. So when, by using a NAND gate and also in inverting the inputs, I get the same effect. For the inverters, I just used the remaining ones on the 74HC14. It doesn't matter that these are also Schmidt triggers. For the NAND gate, I'm using a simple 74HC00. This chip actually contains four of these NAND gates. The 74HC515 also has output latches, which means that the internal state of the shift register is not directly visible on the outputs. Instead, there is a register clock input and whenever this one goes high, the internal state is transferred to the output stage. I'm not really using this feature here, so I'm just connecting the register clock to the inverted I.O. request so that the output gets updated whenever the device is being accessed. There's also a shift register clear input, which can be used to reset the shift register to all zeros. I thought it would be a nice idea if we could use that too, and the way I'm doing that is that whenever we try to write anything to the shift register, what it actually does is pulling shift register clear low, so we cannot really write a value to the register, but we can use an I.O. write to actually reset the thing. And for this I'm using a NAND gate again. So this is how I connected the shift register to the Easy AD bus. And let's try if this actually works as intended. First we have to load the address of our device into the BC register. The exact address does not matter since we are not evaluating the address bus at all. But we have to use an address that is not used by any of the internal devices that are on the EZ80 chip. So the simplest one would be just 0100. I then use an in instruction to actually read from our shift register. After that I'm just copying the value from the A register to memory so that we can see it more easily in the machine code monitor. The first time around we don't see anything because the shift register is still filled with zeros. Now let me put a 1 in there. As you can see it's working. I've now read a 1 from the shift register. I'm now adding more zeros and as you can see the one is shifted over to the next place. Now I've pushed the switch again and I'm now adding some ones. And just another one and another one and maybe one more. So now we have zero F there. Okay, now let's try writing to the register. We use an out instruction for that, and the result should be that the register is being reset. And if we now read from the register again, in fact the value has been reset to 0, 0. It works! I hope you enjoyed this and learned something. Thanks for watching and goodbye!